what do my cell phone, this windmill, and this coal all have in common? Well, they were all once mined from the ground. Before I get into how we mine for minerals, I want to clear up a few commonly confused vocabulary terms. A rock is a solid substance that is made from minerals. All rocks are made from minerals. Granite, for example, is a mixture of the minerals quartz, feldspar, and biotite. A mineral is composed of the same substance throughout its entire structure. Minerals are made of chemicals, either a single chemical element like gold, which is, well, gold, or a combination of elements in a molecule. The rock limestone, for example, is composed of the mineral calcite, whose chemical composition is CaCO3, or calcium carbonate. An ore is any substance where there's enough mineral in it to extract a useful amount of it. Rocks have minerals, and if there's a high enough concentration of a desired mineral in a rock, it's called an ore. So now we can get into how we actually mine and process these minerals. In general, there are two broad types of mining, surface mining and subsurface mining. As the more accessible ores on the surface are mined, mining operations resort to harder to get to mines underground. Underground mining involves drilling a series of tunnels so workers and machinery can access the underground deposits. This is considered very dangerous as the rock above can become unstable and collapse. In April of 2010, a coal mine in West Virginia collapsed when coal dust in the air combusted, causing an explosion. 29 coal miners died in this accident. Though the number of mining disasters have decrease substantially over the last few decades due to new safety regulations, it's still a very dangerous profession. Coal miners especially see high rates of respiratory diseases, especially black lung, which is caused from long-term exposure to coal dust. Surface mining is the removal of large portions of soil and rock from the surface. And there's a few ways we do this. Strut mining is when an area is cleared of vegetation and soil, and ore is removed in subsequent strips, and it kind of ends up looking a little bit like steps. Open pit mining is the removal of material from, well, an open pit. Mountaintop removal is a type of mining where explosives are used to remove the tops of mountains for ore extraction. All types of surface mining result in the destruction of habitat and the removal of vegetation, which contributes to erosion, species loss, and the increased risk of flooding. You know, the usual suspects when vegetation is removed. But there's more to mining than just the disturbance of the land. See, once you have the ore, you need to remove the minerals from it. First, ore needs to be crushed to make it easier to remove the minerals. This results in rock waste, the rock material that didn't have any minerals inside that needs to be separated out. After the ore is crushed, the minerals need to be extracted. A system that's common is froth flotation, where air is pumped into a water solution and the minerals deposit on the bubbles. Any material that isn't attracted by water molecules sinks to the bottom. The froth is then collected and goes on to further processing. The waste material that sinks to the bottom are called tailings. There isn't much you can do with tailings, and they end up being stored in tailing ponds, and these cause a few issues. Because these look like ponds, wildlife may try to inhabit them, but because there's a lot of particles in there that are toxic, like mercury or arsenic, animals may get sick or die. These can also, well, flood and run off and pollute nearby waters and soils. Once you have the mineral extracted and it's been, well, taken off from the froth, you're not fully isolated yet. The last step is smelting, which utilizes either different melting points of metals or different densities of metals to pour off the unwanted material. Uh, what you're left with is the final mineral you were trying to get, like gold or silver. The leftover material is called slag. 
Because the slag may contain other substances like mercury, the slag is also considered toxic and may cause contamination of nearby soils and bodies of water with whatever other metal happened to be in that rock. As the easily accessible and mineral dense rocks are depleted, lower quality ores need to be mined, which result in more tailings and more slag being produced. Minerals are non-renewable. We can't just magically create more gold. Once we deplete minerals, they're gone, and the best we can do is recycle them. One final issue with mines I want to bring to your attention is acid mine drainage. See, many rocks contain some deposits of pyrite, or iron sulfide. When iron sulfide is exposed to air and water, it forms sulfuric acid, which can run off and affect the pH of water streams, which negatively impacts wildlife. Now, this can result from the mine directly, or it can result from the tailings. After a mine operation has been completed, the area must be reclaimed. Reclamation is the process of restoring land to a suitable condition. In the United States, the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act requires a mining operation to present a plan for reclamation in order to even receive a permit to begin mining. This usually involves restoring the topsoil, planting trees, or early succession species in order to minimize the erosion. Sometimes native animals are also introduced into the area to speed up the reclamation process. This entire unit has been about how we use our land and, well, water. But how much land are you responsible for using? The ecological footprint compares the resource demands and waste production required for an individual or society, and it compares it to the speed at which ecosystems can absorb our waste and generate new resources. This can be represented by the area of land needed to support you, right? The area of land needed to grow the food you eat or the trees for the paper and furniture that you buy or the mining of the metals in your phone and the water you use. The Global Footprint Network lets you calculate your ecological footprint and I encourage everyone to do it. It's an activity that I do with my students in class and it's eye-opening and it can really expose grave environmental injustices. If the entire world population lived the life of the average American citizen, we would need five planets worth of resources to sustain that sort of demand. Right now, the entire world is extracting at such a rate that we need 1.7 Earths to sustain the demand. We don't have 0.7 extra Earths. We have this one. So it's time to reconsider the rate at which we're extracting resources and how to minimize them by recycling and perhaps looking at methods of ensuring sustainability. And then it's time to consider how these resources are distributed. You live the life you have because millions around the world are experiencing absolute poverty. Well, mostly because developed countries are hoarding all the resources. If we are to ensure justice and a quality of life for everyone, we must think about what it means to live within the means of the earth.